Yes, Lord, we celebrate your goodness tonight. Come on. Praise the Lord. Welcome to Psalm for the Day. Coming to you live from the redeemed Christian Church of God, Central Parish, Abuja. Let us pray, please. Lord of hosts, we bless you. Commander of all things, we appreciate you. Thank you for this time and this moment. I ask you, Lord, that you minister to your people through your word and let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Today, we will be taking the last verse of Psalm 138, which is verse 8. The Bible records in Psalm 138, verse 8, that the Lord will perfect all which concerneth me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever. Forsake not the works of thine own hands. Precious viewers and listeners, I have to tell you that the Lord God Almighty does ne will never leave a project uncompleted. He does not abandon any project. He does not start a project and leave it and leave it in, uh, in a state of work in progress. No. Whatever he works at or works on, he finishes it. And that should gladden your heart. So it means your case will be, will be perfected. No matter the state. Your finances, your marriage, your health, your business, your education, your accommodation, your building project. Everything will be perfected in Jesus' name. Because God does not abandon the project. Philippians 1 6. Bible is clear there in Philippians 1 6. Bible says, being confident of this very thing, that he who had begun a good work in you will perfect it. He will perfect it. If it's God who began it, rest assured, it will not die in work in progress. Just look at the life of a gentleman in the Bible called Jacob. We all know the story of Jacob. A time came that he ran from home, ran from the, um, his brother Esau. He slept at a place called, um, later called Bethel. Then God appeared to him in a vision of the night, in a dream. And God told him, he said, my hand will not leave you. He said, I will not leave you until I have perfected. I've completed, I've brought to pass that which I promised you today. So there are some things I promised your fathers. I promised Abraham, I promised Isaac, I'm still promising you the same thing. He said, I will not leave you until I perfect it. Do you know he made good his, pro his promise? Because that same Jacob later became Israel. And Israel is the promise gave to Abraham. Because Jacob is not the nation, is Israel. As a nation. So he made him a nation that he promised his, his grandfather. He didn't leave him until he became a nation. And his hand performed everything that he promised him, including possession of the land that he slept on that day. So God is a perfecter of everything. You can see that story in Genesis 28, um, 12 to 15. So people, businesses, even nations, have uncompleted projects. One, when one administration comes, they start, and other people come, they start their own over, and nobody finishes anything. 
Now, that's not your case in Jesus' name. Your own case will be perfected for good in Jesus' name. Some never even visit, visit those such, such projects again. As I told you, this is not the case with God. He perfects everything. He will perfect you spiritually, physically, materially, and every, any area you need a touch. The Lord will perfect it in Jesus' name. When the Lord healed a man of blindness, a man born blind, first touched his eyes, the man said, the Lord asked him, how did you see? He said, I, see, I can see men with like three. Man would say, well, I've tried enough. Go your way. At least you are not able to see before. No, God did not stop them. He gave me a, a second touch. That second touch was his touch of perfection. I can see the second touch of God upon your finances, your marriage, upon your womb, upon your bones, your brain, upon the work of your hands, and perfecting them in Jesus' mighty name. Then look at the man called Moses in Exodus chapter 3. Exodus, uh, Exodus 3, you see a man called Moses. God called him to a task. It was a project, a very big one. And the project was to go to Pharaoh and to deliver Israel from the hand of Pharaoh. Moses said, ha, I'm not sufficient. How can I start this one? Talk less of perfecting it. Number one, it was a stammer. I could not speak well. Number two, he was declared a, a murderer from the land that God asked him to return to, Egypt. So they, they have a record of his crime that they will kill him if they saw him. Then number three, Moses was seen as an ordinary man. He was sent to a man that people called God. Pharaoh was God in Egypt those days. was one of their gods. But what did God do? God supplied him. He sent to him uh, a support so that that project can be perfected. I see God sending a support system to your life. That that project will be perfect. Everything that God needs to support you with, He will send them to you. And that thing will be perfected. Even your life will be perfected. You won't die in that state. That state, that audible state will be over very soon in Jesus' name. So God sent him Aaron. Aaron could speak well. It was a support system. God gave him a rod of power. The rod of Moses. With that rod, he ruled over Egypt. And God gave him his very presence to go with him. And with that, that project was perfected. He succeeded. I see you succeeding in that project today. I see your marriage su succeeding. Your business succeeding. In the name of Jesus, you will succeed as a father. You will succeed as a mother. As a child, you will succeed. You will not fail in Jesus' mighty name. So the Bible now says that it continues by saying that thy mercy, O Lord, endure it forever. God is rich in mercy. Mercy is his wealth. And that mercy has no end. If you read Lamentations 3.23, the Bible says it's of God's mercy that we are not consumed. Say so they are new every morning. That mercy is from day to day. You cannot outrun the mercy of God. So I will employ you today. Go to God. Whatever you have done, tell God you are sorry sincerely. He will not give you according to what you have done, but he will show you mercy. Just be sincere with God. Now imagine if God is not the God of mercy. None of us will be alive today because we sin against him every day. But thank God. Our God is rich in mercy. And finally, say, forsake not the works of thine own hands. This is a request to God for compassion. And remembrance. But I want to assure you, God will never forget you. Because the Bible is clear in Hebrews 13 5. It says, I will not leave you, I will not forsake you. It may seem as if things are tough, that nobody gets your back, but God has your back. He has not left you. It's at that moment that you think God has left you is when God is more present with you. I don't have time to say some things, but I can tell, I can assure you, God has not left you. My brother, my sister, be encouraged. Very soon you will share your testimony. The Bible records in Isaiah 49 verse 16. He said, I have engraved thee in the palm of my hands. He said, I have engraved thee in the palm of my hands. Can God forget his hands? 
No. So he cannot forget you. If there's a mark in God's hand, it's you. You are the one. Say, I've engraved you in the palm of my hand and your words are always before me. You have a memorial before God every time. My brothers, my sisters, he will not leave us. He will not forsake us. And he will perfect all that concerns you even today in Jesus' name. So, Lord, thank you for who you are. What you have done and what you are, you are still doing in our lives. Thank you for perfecting all that concerns our lives. Thank you because you will never leave us and you will never forsake us. Take all the glory forever and ever. Bless that man and bless that woman. Perfect all that concerns them today. Thank you for doing it, our God. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. God bless you. Praise Jesus.